Buenas tardes, familia. It is hola, hola. hola, hola, we are here. This is the conversation that we all been waiting for. I know we're super excited about In the Heights and we, I feel so humble and honored to have the opportunity to spend some time with Kiara Alegria Hudis. Um, Kiara, welcome to FLAF 2021. Thank you so much. This is awesome. I love being a part of this festival. I'm so excited to, uh, you know, be amongst this, this work that's happening. Absolutely. And you know, Philly loves you. So uh, thank you for making the time. And I just wanted to, you know, get into a conversation with you. And I have a couple of questions. So feel free to add and, and let me know and we can keep it going. But the first one, the first question that I have for you is, how does it feel? to see your work adaptation take this life? It's always amazing to write a play and then you're sitting in the audience. You know, when you're writing it, you're alone and it's just you and your imagination and your memories um, and your picture books and photo albums and stuff but then an audience comes and it belongs to them. It's not yours anymore. Um, and it's always amazing. It makes me think of times when I was sitting in the Broadway audience um, and I would just find a seat or, and like, listen, cause I wanted to hear how people responded and people would see a scene with Abuela Claudia, who's one of the elders. And they would say, that's my Nana, that's my Abuela, that's my Tata, you know, and, and also, or during Carnaval del Barrio, um, people, there's a line, I'm Chile Dominican Rican. And, and you would see little girls go, looking at their parents saying, that's me, that's me. You know, so that was really beautiful. And now, because not everyone can get to New York, Broadway tickets are very expensive. And schools and high schools have done it too. So that's how a lot of younger people know the piece through their school. Uh, but now that it's gonna be in a movie and, you can roll up, you can, you know, the tickets are more affordable, you can get your icy and go sit in the, you know, front row if you want, back row if you want, depending on your, you know, I know these are uh, highly opinionated matters, but, and just see the story of comunidad, of uh, orgullo, of joy, uh, of who we are, and how we dance, and how we party, and how we celebrate, and also how we pass on messages of um, humility, integrity, um, cariño, the, all those things, you know, so I, I can't wait. I, I tell you, night red carpet, it's going to be fancy. I'm going to dress up. I'm going to put some makeup on. But what I'm really excited for is to go to my local movie theater and just sit in the audience and see how people respond now that it's going to belong to them. That is so wonderful. And I can tell you, people will love it. It's really something. And I, I love that connection that it belongs to the audience because we can see ourselves reflected, that it's great. Mm -hmm. So I have a follow-up on that and I, did, I know you have touched on, but what would you like audiences to walk away with, especially at this time and everything that it's happening in our communities after watching the film? I really right now, we have all been through such a difficult year together. And, you know, especially for me, like in my like Philly Rican family, in my body feminist family, like we touch each other. You know, we don't like say hi and shake hands. No, we are in each other's faces, in each other's necks, hair, you know, like when we dance, we slap each other's asses, okay? And um, am I allowed to say that? I'm like- Absolutely, um, absolutely. So, you know, and then to go a year and a half and not be able to do that safely with my mom, that, that comes at a cost. That takes a toll, you know? Um, so what I, this movie is about joy. It's, you know, you see scenes of us dancing our butts off in a crowded alleyway or at the local public pool and being together in the, in the hair salon, in the bodega. And so what I want people to take away is just, it, it honestly is just joy. We earned it. We earned to be joyous together. I'm not talking about self-care by ourselves. I'm talking about community care together. So um, that's it. The medicine of 
of joy and happiness. Thank you. And there's, so there is the reality of the heavy year that we have experienced, right? And that we're still dealing with. Is there, and I know that impacted the release. Is there a silver lining? And I know you have touched on it, but is there a silver lining to this delay? Because a lot of times we see delays as complications or challenges. I would like to say that sometimes they offer opportunities and just gifts. What is the silver lining of the release being pushed a year? You know, when we, we were gonna be a year ago and um, our nation was having a hard time for different reasons at that time, um, you know, coming after headline after headline about family separation. And for many of us, those weren't just headlines. That was our prima, that was our neighbor down the street, you know, that, that is a loved one or a community member. That was hard. That was very hard. And so I think something like In the Heights, which is about joy, which has an immigration story, is about communities rallying together. It was almost like it would have been like just a defense that, yes, we belong here. This is our nation, too, you know. Um, now it's a different time. We're wondering how can we rebuild now? Um, I don't think this piece is going to feel so defensive of our right to just have the big story that we do have. Okay, we have that, but I do think it's, it's going to be a little bit more proactively just celebratory, um, just dang, it feels so good to, you know, watch them dance bachata on the side of a building, to watch them, um, you know, sing a, an epic Cuban ballad in an old subway car in New York, you know, I think it's, I think we're just going to be able to have a lot more fun with it and, um, enjoy the summer, enjoy, enjoy our family who we take to the movies, all those things. Yeah, I agree. I think that the, what the year has given us amongst many things is the fact that there are a lot of things that we have taken for granted, that now the simplest things are just so meaningful and yeah. that we're going to get to really give it the value that, give them the value that they deserve and just experience them and be more present. So yeah. thank you for that. So, you know, we know that this is, we're, we're focusing on in the heights, but you have the broken language now and there are other pieces mm -hmm. and other work that you have done. Can you tell us a little bit and can you tell audiences a little bit more about the common thread in your work? Um, the common thread in my work is, it's about how complicated we are, you know, I. I grew up as a musician and I remember really loving music that where you could feel how complicated it was. Not that it sounds like intense or anything, but this is one of the things I love about Afro-Caribbean music is all of the syncopation involved. So you have the clave beat, right? And, and I, took, I took lessons in Philly with Elio Villafranca and he, he would break it down for me. Yes. And he would break it down for me. He'd be like, okay, play the clave beat with your left hand play the montuno on the piano with your right hand and you would feel that syncopation, you feel that push and pull where all these different sounds sound better and smoother together. And that's like my life, that's my writing. You know, it's me saying, well, okay, I wanna be a strong woman. I wanna pass on to my kids being a strong woman. Pero I also wanna cook arroz, modest meals at my stovetop. Like, can I be a traditional woman and a strong woman and what does that look like you know these things that they tell us don't go together and I'm like no I'm putting them together you know those are the kind of stories I'm trying to tell um to kind of reframe what the possibilities are of womanhood of Latinidad of creativity of you know Philly I I one of the common threads of my work is Philly Philly's got it all Philly's got it all you know and it's enough to keep writing on forever Yep, as somebody who came to Philly for six weeks and it's going in 33 years, I definitely <laughs> came for an exchange program, met two Boricuas at Temple in the admissions office and they were like, Nana, why don't you transfer? And it was a wrap. And here I am, hey. um, Philly's home. Yes, so 
thank you for sharing that. The last question that I have for you is really, what is your message? Nosotros sabemos que la brega can be challenging. La brega never stops, mm -hmm. right? That hustle. But for mm -hmm. creatives, emerging creatives, FLAF is really center in, you know, the power of this, uh, of film and art and culture, but the intersection with community. That's at the core of what we do. And I just wanted to ask this question about what is your message to emerging creatives um, as they're dealing with their own brega and their own challenges? You know, um, I think part of being an artist is you have triumphs and failures every single day. So you have to learn from the failures, okay? But you also have to really savor savor the triumphs um, and learn from those too. And one of the things for, for uh, young artists and art, you know, young or old alike, I don't think you're ever like a master artist because you're always still learning. You know, you can have a big success, but you still have to write a new story and find a story that matters the next day. Um, and I think one of the things is, is just to, as much as you can, and any notion of what an artist should do, how an artist should be, how a story should be told. Okay, you exist, I'm putting you over here. Now I'm going to let my imagination really roam. How can it be? Not how should it be, how can it be? How can it go? And I like to tell young artists and um, emerging artists, especially, you know, do the thing that you know only you could do and do it the way that only you could do it. If you know this other brilliant playwright or poet who could write that particular poem, then let it be. Uh -huh. You know, let the poem be. Find the one that only you can write in your way and that's the one you should be writing. Thank you for that. I think that's really, really critical because a lot of times as we're looking at ourselves and our practices, we may go and look at more traditional or other models that are really not, it's gotta be your own, right? And I yeah, know that yeah. there, you know, a lot of people are like, you know, the authenticity and sometimes those words are kind of like pimped a little bit, right? <laughs> to mm -hmm, some extent, mm -hmm. But it's really, you know, I was talking to somebody about my practice the other day and they're like, how do you define it? And I say, it's like Paulo Freire meets El Gran Combo. You know what I mean? It's like center <laughs> on how do we see ourselves, but el gran combo, ahora digo, es de clave. And by the way, folks, if you don't know who Elio Villafranca is, do yourself a favor and check. This brother is serious. So it's- Yes, it's, I love me a jazz pianist, please. You know, I grew up listening to Eddie Palmieri. I grew up listening to Michel Camilo, who I've collaborated with and to take lessons from another great jazz pianist, Elio Villafranca. That was, that was a gift. Fantastic. And talking about collaborations, I also know, and I mentioned earlier, we want to take the opportunity to give a shout out to Gabriela Sanchez and the crew at Power Street Theater and, and Doña Virginia, who are, you know, just other artists in Gabriela, in Kiara's family and part of the Philly, uh, you know, arts and culture landscape. So we want to just take a moment to, to acknowledge them and thank them for, for their contribution. Yeah. I'm very proud of my women, very proud of them. I learned so much from them. And thinking about them, I think of something that the di director of In the Heights, John Chu, uh, told me, which is authenticity. Like you said, that, that phrase can get pimped out a little bit. It can become a little bit watered down or meaningless. Mm -hmm. And it can be used as a weapon too. John Chu said, authenticity is an action. It's not a static way to be, it's an action. And I see that in my sister Gabby's work she goes into the community and she, she takes the pulse of it and she does work in the community and she learns every day. I saw my mom do that for decades. She was trying to get better health outcomes for Latina mothers in North Philly, you know, and now I'm trying to do it through storytelling for In the Heights, you know, what did that action look like? It looked like we went, we did casting at the casting calls in the neighborhood for dancers, for extras. We filmed on the streets here. We weren't just writing about it. We were creating jobs here. Um, so, you know, it's that action. I think it is a very active thing. Thank you so very much. And thanks again for making the time. Um, we're honored to have the opportunity to celebrate you and your work. Keep it going. La Brega never stops. And know okay. that you have, 
you know, people in Philly that are really excited about this and that, um, and we can, we can wait for, because we know there's more work uh, to come. So we're excited and honored to have the opportunity to, to share some space with you and have a conversation with you. Thank you. It's really my honor too. And may the festival be fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. So familia, we're going to wrap up, but check in the heights and um, check my broken language and continue to follow the work of the fabulous Kiara Alegria cuties. I hope I got that right with my accent. Thank you. You so got much. it right. There you go. Thank you. Thank you.